in case of um, raw diet, let's say raw diet, mm -hmm. um, is it possible to have to meet also allergies in this kind of diet? To get allergies on a raw diet? Yes. Uh, the raw diet tends to be a diet that avoids allergies mm -hmm. quite well because you leave out, of course, the fish, the eggs, the dairy, these big problems with allergies. You also leave out the grains, the um, gluten, mm -hmm. and so it tends to be a diet that people do well on. And some people, for example, with rheumatoid arthritis or with uh, um, fibromyalgia, find that their symptoms decrease on a raw diet. They do very well. Um, but people could be allergic to some a food. Uh, there's oral allergies to fruits. There, there is uh, sesame seed allergy. There are other, there are allergies to practically every food in existence, but very few on a raw diet. Um, what would you answer to people asking um the fruitarian people. Fruitarian people, they say we don't have the enzyme to digest the fiber of the, the vegetables. Uh, we don't have the enzyme to digest it properly. Well, one of the things that it's important to do is to chew food carefully. It takes some time yeah. chewing food, not just gulp it down. Mm -hmm. um, the saliva has enzymes to break down starches, and then the, the stomach can do that. But, um, from an anthropological point of view, uh -huh. where do you think um, a human being come from? Human beings, what is our, our diet historically? Uh, you mean like the, the ideas we could go back to nature and eat what our ancestors ate? Well, this is very interesting because we people on raw diets would like, in many cases, to eat like our ancestors. But they ate very different foods. For example, in some North American First Nations people ate the inner bark of trees. We don't eat that now. That's a plant food, but we don't know how to get that now. and We don't find it in the store. They eat fruit, but the type of fruit that was used was much higher in nutrition and lower in sugar. So it was a different type of fruit. Um, and they ate fiddlehead ferns. They ate different types of plant foods even from what we have now. A lot of greens, but they were different greens from what you find. Certainly not iceberg lettuce, um, you know, these very cultivated plant foods. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and they also, if they ate meat, it was game that ran outside, it had to run away from predators. Mm -hmm. It ate, They ate leaves all the time. The fat content was about 10% what the meat is now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people will go on a, say a raw diet, or, but they'll include meat, but they'll go to the store and get some, even organic beef. But it was from a small <laughs> little lot where, where the cow stayed. So it was, it was entirely different. To go on was called a paleontologic diet. Or, yeah, <laughs> this is so different from what you can find in a supermarket. How many years ago we started cooking food? Oh, I understood that was about ten thousand years ago, but I, I don't know that. Okay. And do, I, do you think our interiors have? Uh, adapted from that period? Have oh, from cooking. That. When they look back in history, mm -hmm. what they find is animal bones and, and shells, but the remains from plant foods have long vanished, so it's very hard to tell what our ancestors mo ate most in plant the foods. people um, yeah. say, well, we can eat uh, cooked food because our body have uh, Has, um, got an evolution right, through the years, yeah, so we yeah. can now. Is it true this or not? Well, I think if you look at the w diets of people worldwide, you see that humans are quite versatile. Mm -hmm. People in northern Canada, Inuit people, eat such a different diet from people in Hawaii or in Italy. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just so different, mm -hmm. and yet they've managed, you know, people um, have managed on a diet that had practically no plant foods at all, mm -hmm. the Inuit. I mean, they, they have shorter lifespan, they have some health problems, um, they just have very different challenges. And then 
people, some people near the equator, they eat a lot more fruit. I mean, it's on the trees, and and uh, so, um, and and some of the First Nations people from long ago um, had a very plant-based diet. The Anasazi Indians, they ate corn and squash, and. But ideally, what would be the best? For, um, for, humans? for humans? Well, we have wondered that. And I think uh, looking at back at history is probably not our best guide mm -hmm. because the foods that are available to humans now are so different. What we can actually get, like it, it's too idealistic to try and think of people living in the wild and going and collecting berries off bushes mm -hmm. because that is impossible for most people. Yes, but yeah. I think it's very, very important so you want to, to, know, know to know what would be optimal. Would be then we can adapt for depending on which region we live and our situation, our body, and so on. Right. Forth. Yeah. Okay. Well, in our books, what we have we have wondered this as well, mm -hmm. and I instead of looking at history to see what there was, mm -hmm. because. Um, it's it's just too difficult to figure out from that source. We look at the health statistics now mm -hmm. and see who is doing the best, mm -hmm. you know. And we find from, say, the, the Oxford EPIC studies, these great big studies that they've been doing in Europe, based in Oxford and different European countries, including Italy, amassing the research. We find that a plant-based diet is very good. A near plant-based diet is also very good. If you eat a plant-based diet plus some fish, um, that seems to be a good one. So all of these seem to support health very, very well, and including a vegan diet. But it must be done so that you include enough vitamin B12 and enough calcium and vitamin D. And, mm -hmm. and these really show very good statistical results mm -hmm. in terms of, of health now. So that's the best answer I think I can give you, and I know it isn't, it isn't um, exactly yes, what you were uh, wondering. Is, but if we want to add to this aspect also the ethical aspect, uh, right. what, would, what <laughs> yeah. would you recommend? Okay, well, well, often people are interested, yeah, first in, in their own health, they want to make sure they're healthy, and then we start to look at the ethics. If you start thinking beyond yourself to other species, and of course the vegan diet has a tremendous amount going for it then. And uh, we, we now know how to do this in good health as well. We can do a really good vegan diet because we have products available in the stores, we have um, the guidelines that are, are very clear now, here's how to do it in good health, and you just need the, this combination of um, fruits and vegetables with a big emphasis on vegetables. And we can include nuts and seeds. We can include grains, um, either the true grains or the gluten-free that are not true grains, um, and the legumes. And we don't need to include every one of these foods, but we can do a wonderful diet with based on those.